Okay, so we've got a second example here for inventory. So Ben Limited bought inventory for $150 from an external supplier on 1 July 2015. It sold it to its parent QCO Limited for $200 on 1 December 2015, who then sold 60% externally on the same date for $150. QCO Limited sold the remaining inventory externally during the year ended 30 June 2017. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to debit sales revenue by $200. So the reason we want to do this is because we have when um, Ben Limited sold inventory to QCO, they sold it for $200. So Ben Limited would have recognized $200 of sales revenue. From the group's perspective, a sale hasn't actually been made. Just a transfer between one entity to another entity. So we will then offset this revenue recognized by Ben Limited by debiting it for $200. The $150 of sales revenue that QCO recognized is perfectly acceptable from the group's perspective because it was sold to an external party. We will receive cash for it and so we will actually have an increase in our resources as a result of this sale. The next thing we'll do, we'll credit COGS by $180. The reason it's $180 is because when Ben Limited sold to QCO Limited, there was uh, $150 of COGS, which was recognized. So this is the original cost. Now, this original cost is what we need to use to calculate the COGS for the sale to the external party. So we know we sold 60% of the inventory to the external party. So 60% multiplied by $150 equals $90. So we only want to recognize $90 of COGS. But we know that Ben Limited recognized $150 of COGS when it sold the inventory to QCO. Now QCO bought the inventory for $200. So QCO's cost base for that inventory is $200. And when they sold that 60% of inventory, they would have recognized COGS of $120. So the total COGS between Ben Limited and QCO Limited is $270, but from the group's perspective, we only want to recognize $90, which is 60% of the original $150. So to work out what the amount for the credit COGS is, what we do, we just take $90 from $270, and that gives us our $180 amount. Okay, so then the next thing we want to do so we want to credit inventory by $20. So the reason we want to do this is because the original cost, which the group wants to use, we know is $150. We've already sold off $90 worth of that. So we have $60 inventory remaining. QCO's cost was $200. From their perspective, we sold off $120 externally, and so we have $80 remaining. Now, because from a group perspective, we want to carry our inventory forward at what the original cost was, we need to reduce inventory value from the $80, which will be recognized on QCO's balance sheet, back to the $60 that we want to actually carry our inventory at, because that was the original cost. So that's why we're crediting inventory by $20. So the next thing we need to do after that, we need to recognize the tax effect. So we will debit DTA by $6, and we will credit income tax expense by $6 as well. So the reason we're doing this is because we have the sales revenue of $200 that Ben Limited would have recognized and the 
$180 of COGS expense that between Ben Limited and QCO Limited from the group's perspective should not have been recognised. So both that $200 and $180 from the group's perspective shouldn't have been recorded. So when you take $200 of revenue and take off $180 of expense, you get a $20 profit that the group doesn't believe should actually be recognised at this stage. So down at the individual legal entity level, they would be paying tax on that $20 profit, which is equal to $6 if you calculate the tax rate at 30%. And so from the group's perspective, we're reducing our income tax expense by $6 because we don't believe we should have incurred it yet. And we're recognising a deferred tax asset because we've already paid tax for an amount that we don't believe we should have, and so we recognise it as an asset. But the next thing we're going to do, we're going to look at the external sale of the remaining inventory at 30 June 2017. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to debit our retained earnings, opening balance, by $20. And we want to credit our COGS by $20 as well. So the reason we want to do this is we have, when we look back here last year, we debited sales revenue by $200, which is decreasing retained earnings. We credited COGS by $180, which increases retained earnings. So the net impact was a $20 reduction to retained earnings. Now, because sales revenue and COGS are both closed to retained earnings at the end of the year, if we want to make that adjustment going forward, we're going to have to debit the opening balance of retained earnings. Now, the reason we credit COGS by $20 is because we've sold that remaining 40% of inventory, and we highlighted in the previous question that QCO was carrying that inventory at $80, and that Ben Limited had been carrying that inventory, oh sorry, and the group would expect that the inventory should be carried at $60. So when the inventory was sold, QCO would recognise COGS of $80, but the group only wants to recognise COGS of $60, because that's based on the original cost. And so we will make that $20 adjustment to bring COGS back from $80 down to $60. Then we will record the tax effect, so we'll debit income tax expense by $6, and credit retained earnings, opening balance by $6. So the reason we increase our income tax expense by $6 is because we've reduced our COGS by $20 here, so we reduced our expenses by $20, which means we'll have $20 more profit so we have to pay tax on that $20 of profit. And then we've credited our retained earnings opening balance. So if we look at last year, we credited income tax expense by $6. And that tax expense will be closed to retained earnings at the end of the year. And so to recognise it going forward, we will credit retained earnings at the opening balance. Okay, so... Just say, for example, for 2018, we don't need any entries. Reason why? This COGS will turn into retained earnings opening balance. This income tax expense will turn into retained earnings opening balance. So they will perfectly offset each other to zero. And so we won't need to recognise any entries in subsequent years going forward. So that's all. So I hope the video was useful.